<laughs> this feels fucking fancy. Like, the last time I was here, there wasn't a stage. So now it's like, I'm really overcompensating right now. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, how was everybody's year? I gotta ask. How was everybody last year? Happy New Year, everybody. Happy fucking New Year. How, how was everybody's Christmas? Everybody's Christmas was good? Okay, I, I love the fucking hearing. So, uh,. I found out something new about myself, and I and I don't know if I'm happy about it, but I'm gonna share it with y'all. Um, I'm one of those keep the Christmas tree up until summer type of people. You, you know what I mean? Cause uh, I paid for that real tree, and I really need to get my money's worth, cause uh, a month ain't long enough. It's gotta be a Happy New Year tree. My birthday coming up on the 22nd. Oh shit. My birthday coming up, so it gotta be a birthday tree, it gotta be a Black History Month tree, it gotta be an Indigenous People's Day tree, it gotta be a Happy Spring tree, it gotta be all that shit. I gotta get that eighty dollars worth of tree. Anyways, but back to my Christmas, let me tell you. For real, y'all have a good Christmas? Please, somebody tell me I had a good Christmas. Okay, cool. Cause uh, I got a story for y'all that's about to ruin y'all motherfucking Christmas forever, so. Like, uh, and that's saying a lot coming from me, cause I grew up poor, so. I definitely had those type of parents that were just like, at least you got somewhere to live as parents for Christmas, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, have you ever taken a nap for Christmas? Like, like you have the freedom to sleep in your bed, like that's the fucking gift? Like, yeah, I, I had that shit. My, my parents tell me, they used to take some wild shit. They would be like, if they didn't have enough money for the gift, they would just be like, oh yeah, we don't have a chimney, so uh, Santa couldn't make it this year. Yeah, see, you see how sad it is? That was my childhood. So imagine when the story about to tell you that's worse than that. Yeah, exactly. So let's let me just get to the story. So I'm trapped at my uh, my in-laws' houses, and my, I don't really I fucking hate my wife's family. I'm gonna just say that she's not here, so she won't ever see this. Um, me being around them is like you know when like the ABC TV shows where they got the science fair with the little baking soda volcano and shit, and then yeah, that, that's like what it is. Or, what's that shit? You know, um, imagine you're going to go take a, take a shit and you just uncontrollably come and piss at the same time. Like, that's what it's like being around my wife's family. Like, it's just, it's just not fucking fun at all. Like, um, so, I decided, you know, we gotta do some shit that's gonna help us bond. Because everybody's sitting around all angry and, and fat, and I just can't deal with that shit. I can be fat, but you're not gonna be angry and fat around me. It's not about that like that. So I decided, fuck it, I'm a grand family feud. And the best thing about family feud is I got my, ooh, I love it, sorry. I really got excited there for a minute. I got this bomb ass Steve Harvey impression. And I, I know y'all probably excited, like, yeah, you gonna do that shit. I'm like, nah, I'm not gonna do that shit. Cause all the panties in this room gonna get wet because of how sexy Steve Harvey is. And I can't afford to have that happen, especially when my wife went away. But yeah, pause the story real quick. I'm a little upset because, um, None of my wife's family like, like my Steve Harvey impression. None of them complimented it, nothing, you know. And that's why I don't fuck with them. They're just some hating ass niggas, and I can't stand that shit. Well, anyways, I decide, you know, I'm gonna go through and make the teams and shit like that. I, I mean, I picked some very elegant, very strong, very beautiful, very charismatic names for the teams. My team is gonna be called The Penis. Right down the nose, I'm immature, fuck all of y'all. That's just, it is what it is. My, my, the other team, I decided to call them the micro penis. My brother-in-law's on that team, it fits him perfectly. So, yeah, it is what it is. So, let me tell you something about myself. I am the most competitive person that I know and you will probably ever meet. Even if you don't know me, just know that I'm the most competitive person ever and I'm a sore fucking winner. Like to the point where I'm like Fortnite dancing in my son's face when I beat him, when I race him from one side of the to the other. He's two. Fuck him. Let's put, let's just put it like that. <laughs> let's just put it like that. But anyways, my stepdaughter hates the fact that I am competitive because I talk so much shit about being competitive. So, you know, at some point during the game, she decides to tell, say something to me, you know, because she doesn't like me Fortnite dancing at her. She's just like, no, why don't you just shut up? And, you know, I'm a father figure slash stepfather figure, you know, I gotta be who I am and very respectful. So I just say something very subtle to her. I look her straight in the face and I say, no, you shut up, micro penis. You know, just using the name of the team. You know, and uh, this is where I fucked up. Uh, so I don't know if y'all remember when y'all was kids, 
But do you remember how you would respond when somebody would try to insult you, even joke with you as a kid? You would either say the opposite, or you would say something stupid to double down on what they just said. So you, you probably can see where I'm going if you're paying attention. My stepdaughter decided to say the opposite of what I just said to her. She looked me clean in the face and said, no, you shut up, big penis. Y'all seen, seen the foot movement? Like, I felt the anxiety. Like, I think I saw Chris Hansen coming in through the door. Like, I heard police sirens in the background. Like, I saw visions of my funeral because her father killed me. Like, her real dad. Obviously, I ain't her real dad. But it was that fucking real. You see, y'all was all shocked, and it was just like that. My mother-in-law starts to cry. My brother-in-law starts laughing like it's the funniest shit that he's ever heard. Like, and he a fat motherfucker too, so he was laughing and hyperventilating at the same time. He legit, he legit almost fucking died. It was that funny to him. My wife, me and my wife were sitting there just like, shocked. My wife looks at me, I look at her, she look at me, I look at her. And she just like, I didn't know black people could turn red. And I, I like touch my face as if I could feel the red. And I'm just, uh, me neither, shit, let's, let's never talk about it again. So, long story short, my stepdaughter is spending Christmas with her real dad next year. I'm not gonna deal with no shit like that ever fucking again. All right, that's my story, but I got a couple questions for y'all. I've been spending a lot of time at work and I don't got nobody to ask this shit to. And if I ask people at work, I get in trouble, so I'm gonna just have to ask y'all. Is it wrong that I tell customers at my job that I'm white? <laughs> no, right? It's okay. Like, transracial is a thing, isn't it? Like, I can be whatever I want to be. If I want to be a powerful white man in society, I should be able to be a powerful white man in society, right? But apparently it's against company policy to say things like that to customers. It may make customers uncomfortable. This is all my bitch ass manager talks about. He's just a hater. Because yes, he's white, but he's not a powerful white man like I am. And, that, that, and that's the issue. So, real, real quick question. Um, I found out that if you call your coworkers darkies in front of customers, they will call HR on you. Mm -hmm. You know what I also found out? If a customer says, how are you? And you say, nothing makes my day more bright than waking up white, they will also tell on you. And then you will also have to explain that to HR, even though it is just an excellent Martin reference, but they don't fucking get it. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Real quick, um, who is uh, who is the best black superhero? I, I need some audience participation. Who do y'all think? Static Shock. Static Shock? No, get the fuck out of here. Okay. No. Oh, no, Black Panther. Nah, definitely not. He dead. No, um, Black Panther. Uh, no, no, she's definitely the worst. And that's like, uh, oh, some non-comedy shit. Black Panther walk out of forever was fucking awful. And if you think Shuri's a good pet Black Panther, you can kiss my black ass. <laughs> no, but no, the best here, I'm gonna tell you, if you really into comics, some people might say like the Blue Marble or some shit like that. Yeah, that shows, that's a deep cut. Nobody knew who the fuck I was talking about. But anyways, the best black superhero by far is Rachel Dolezal. And if you don't know who the fuck Rachel Dolezal is, just know she is famous for being a real life ass shapeshifter. She, exactly. See, she know what the fuck it is. Rachel Dolezal is 1000% black. Like, she is like Brady Bunch levels of white. But she convinced the whole motherfucking country that she was a nigga. And I commend that shit 1,000%. And I, that's why she's the best white superhero. No other superhero could do no shit like that. <laughs> I got another question for y'all, real, real quick. Is it weird that I sometimes tell my wife that she's a reincarnation of my dad? <laughs> No, it's not weird, right? Like, I mean, they have the same birthday. Like, I'm into astrology and crystals and all that shit. I'm an aquarium myself. Like, I know this shit. Like, yeah, so it's not weird. Except, that, okay, it is weird. I'm gonna be honest. It, it's especially weird when you want to get some ass and your wife decides to say, oh, don't you want to, you wouldn't want to fuck your dad, do you? And she hated my answer because I was like, I mean, my dad died nine years ago, so if fucking him would mean I could see him, I might take that chance, you know? Is that? <laughs> I just admitted that in front of strangers. Oh no, I, I wouldn't actually do that. I actually have a portrait of my dad right here, so it's even more weird. Like I'm saying, like, yeah, I, I did that. <laughs> but anyways, man, that's my time. Thank y'all for being my therapist. My name is Lauren Stewart.
All right, keep it going for Melvin. There we go.